Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mandeep and in today's video, we are going to build our first deep learning model with the help of artificial neural network. And the problem statement that we are going to solve today is of customer churn. And uh, we are going to do this exercise with the help of Google Collab. As you can see that I have opened a window collab.research.google.com. So Google Collab is basically a platform which is offered by Google. And what we can do is we can create or uh, create our models here. We can do the trainings and then we can uh, publish from here to the GitHub as well. And we can do a lot of stuff here. The difference between the doing the uh, building a model from Google Colab and the Jupyter Notebook is that Jupyter Notebook uses the local hardware, whereas the Google Colab uses the cloud servers which are hosted into Google Cloud. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's get started. First of all, I'm just going to take you through a Google Colab. Uh, quick brief overview. So as you can see that hey, this is my uh, the web page and it is beautiful. It is beautifully designed. Um, anyone can use it and it is free of cost until unless if you want some specific high power servers, uh, it is free of cost. So how we can use is uh, you can go from here file new and then you need to create a new notebook. This way we can create a new notebook and there are multiple beautiful things that are integrated with Google Collab. We can basically publish our code to the GitHub. Uh, just from the same UI and we can connect with Google Drive as well. So uh, before going on to the coding part, now let us go first. We are going to understand about our data set and the kind of problem that we are trying to solve today. So this problem is of customer churn, customer churn of a particular bank. So uh, this is the problem. This is the data set. So you, uh, you can see I'm, I'm going to take you through uh, each column one by one and I'm going to tell you what actually uh, that particular column what sort of data uh, it has so this is row number anyone can relate with it this is just a num row number of the data and this is customer id unique identifier for a customer surname is the surname of the customer credit score tells about the credit score of the customer geography tells about the location gender tells about the uh, and gender is then tenure. Tenure is like how much time customer was associated with the bank. Balance tells about the balance. Number of products the customer is using. Has credit card? Yes or no. Is active member? Yes or no. Estimated. What is the estimated salary? And exited. Exited tells us that uh, that particular customer has left the bank or not. This is the problem that we want to solve. We want to build a deep learning model using this data which can tell us that uh, which can tell us that that a particular customer will leave the bank or not so uh, a quick uh, analysis initial analysis of the data we can do from here as well so as you can see that we there are few columns which are of no use for us so row number customer id and surname these three columns are of no use because row number does not have any relation with that a particular customer will leave the bank or not the same way customer id is not uh, related with the customer will leave the bank or not and surname the same way surname have no relation with that particular customer will leave the bank or not so um, so we can basically drop these columns or we can we we choose not to include these columns into our uh, training data set and the rest column are useful for us uh, these columns we can keep them into our x feature matrix and this is going to be our y that is what we want to predict, predict. so uh, let's get started first of all we can rename this our uh, ipynb file basically uh, we are going to build our artificial neural network model ann uh, so now, first thing first, uh, from here, once you click on this folder icon, uh, you will be able to connect with the Google Drive. Uh, so you can see that uh, here from here, this, this icon, Mount Drive. So once I will click on it, it will ask me the permission. And if I give the permission to the Google, so Google Collab, it will link my Google Drive with this uh, Google Collab. So 
And the reason why I'm linking my basically uh, the drive here is because my data set is hosted in my drive. So the data set which I just showed to you. So first of all, um, first thing first, let us import the required libraries. Uh, import pandas as pd and then we are going to need numpy as num np and we are going we are going to build our uh, first deep learning model so we are going to use tensorflow uh, so i have imported these required libraries the next thing what we are going to do is we are going to go to this drive column and then this inside this my drive and here are uh, here is my data this is my churn modeling dot csv this is the file so if we want to copy the path of this file we just go right click here and copy the path of this file and then the next we are good the next thing what we need to do is we need to read this csv so what we can do is we can use this uh, pd dot read csv method of pandas library and i have just given the path which i just copied from here and i'm taking this into a df object so if I run it, now I'm getting my uh, data frame object. And if I take a look on the df.head, df.head will give me the first five rays of my data. So we can see that uh, now this is my data set has been loaded. And uh, the next thing what I want to do is, next thing what I want to do is, after loading the data set, uh, what we want to do is we want to basically uh, generate our X and Y basically. Then X is our uh, feature matrix and Y is going to be our target variable. So to generate X and Y, what we can do is uh, there is a method inside uh, uh, this uh, with this data frame object what we call it and to do that uh, what we can do is df.iloc and inside iloc we can pass the uh, location so here the value before the col comma this represents that uh, i want to take all of the value all of the rows and after comma it represents the columns so here minus one represents that i want to take the last column so my last column here is my this one uh, exited column which is this one so what i'm saying is that uh, my y my last column from this data frame is my y so once we have done this the next thing what we want to do is the same way we want to create our x feature matrix so to create the feature matrix what we can do is since in x matrix or feature matrix we want to have values uh, we want to have columns we do not want this row number column customer id and surname we want this one from third column what we want till the 13th column so what we are going to do here is we are going to do pass the value something like this way and once we do this uh, we can then check that what columns it has picked x let's say if i type x0 it will give me the first uh, value from my x matrix so this is how it is it has picked so this is 619 619 is basically the credit score this one and then geographic france female and it has picked till uh the estimated salary one zero one yes so it has picked all of the correct columns now my x is ready my y is ready the next thing what we want to do is if we take a look at the geography column and gender column we can see that both of these are uh, values are in string objects and our machine learning or our computer do not understand this so we want to convert them into some numerical form so these are categorical variable so we want to convert them into numerical form so to do that we have different methods available into machine learning one way is we can do this with the help of uh, um, we can do this with the help of basically label encoder basically label encoder is inside our sklearn.preprocessing so how we can do this is um, we can do something like this way from sklearn.preprocessing we can import a label encoder, then create an object of label encoder, and in, then we can do the le.fit transform, and we are passing the second column from this x matrix, and then we are assigning what after 
after doing the transformation we are assigning back into the second column of x itself so after this once we will do this one we can take a look at this since we have we have converted our female column into the numerical form if we take a look at it we can see that it has been changed so if i now say x0 now after friends earlier it was female now it is zero so now that means that my gender column values have been converted into numerical form and those values uh, have been placed back into the same column into the uh, second column of this x matrix the next thing with what we want to since our uh, our gender column has only two type of value male and female so we used label encoder the but our country have many values uh, so we cannot use label encoder the reason here is that because our label encoder basically converts the values into uh, like 0 1 2 in this sequence but uh, uh, here we have many values like uh, we have many countries so our value may go from 0 to let's say 10 we have different 10 countries so and what will happen that uh, after that uh, our model will uh, give more priority to the higher value so uh, assume that my france got converted to uh, 10 so it may be possible that uh, our model may give higher value higher importance to that particular value which is of not a good sign so what we in such cases what we what we can do is we can use one hot encoder so to, how to use one hot encoder so to use one hot encoder the same it is almost similar but uh, how we are going to use is we are going to do this with the help of new thing uh, the column transformer and i am going to tell you why we need column transformer here so from sklearn.pre processing i have imported my one hot encoder and the from sklearn.compose i have imported my column transformer i am going to tell you that why we need this column transformer and after this what we can do is we can do the transformation of my uh, country column something like this way so i'm going to take you through this so basically uh, the idea here is that well the column transformer is is one more class in our sklearn library that will allow us to select a particular column from our data set on which we want uh, to apply one hot encoding so basically uh, uh, one basically transformer a column transformer is one more class with the help of which we are applying uh, one hot encoding on a particular column so that's what we are doing here so inside this column transformer we need to pass the value of transformers and what is the transformer here is our one hot encoding our one hot encoder so that's what we are only doing this and once we created the column transformer object we are just passing the x variable and it is giving me the uh, x the x matrix itself after this you will be able to see that my country is no more there it got converted to some numerical values so if i say uh, here you can see that it got converted to something else so now my data set is now my uh, categorical column have been uh, basically converted to numerical column the next thing what we can do is we can basically uh, train test split our data set uh, split our data set into training and testing data set so for that purpose what we can do is from sklearn.model selection we can import train test split create an object of train test split we can pass the value of x and y x is my uh, the feature matrix y is my predicting variable uh, and this is my test size 20% uh, of the uh, data i want to keep for the testing purpose and it is going to give me x train x test y train y test this is a standard practice we have done it a number of times in our machine learning models after this one more thing that we can do is from here you can take a look at that uh, let's say we have this much of feature and there are few feature which range whose values range from like from zero to one and some have value in thousands and some have values in hundreds so um, before giving it to the machine learning model it is a good practice that we bring all of those 
uh, values on to the same scale which are currently distributed on to the different scales uh, because we do not want that our model to give higher importance to the column which has uh, higher values so for that purpose we have scalars into our machine learning and we can use standard scalar we have many scalar we are going to use standard scalar in our this case so once uh, to use that standard scalar it is similar to using the encoder it is also present in sklearn.pre processing i am just importing this standard scalar then i am creating an object of it and after creating an object of it i am doing the fit transform for my training data set uh, training data subset basically fit transform will do the training as well as the uh, transformation whereas only transformation will do the transformation part because we do not want that our model or uh, this our x test got that remain uh, basically um, uh, that remain into the memory or our model learns bef uh, before we test it then uh, the next thing uh, now we can start with creating our model so create our model we are going to do with the help of keras tf.keras.models.sequential and we are going to create it so this is uh, now with this object now uh, sequential object the next thing where we are going to do is we are going to create hidden layers now in hidden layers we can uh, inside a neural network we can have any number of uh, hidden layers and every hidden layer may contain any number of neurons so to add hidden layers to this um, this basically this model or this neural network ann dot add we need to call this method add and then tf dot keras dot layers dot dense and we need to pass the values inside this unit six means that we want to create one layer of six neurons and the activation function we want to use is relu so basically this line of code means that we are adding one layer of six neurons and those six neurons are going to use relu as their activation function the same way we can add more hidden layers here we can uh, add as many hidden layers here uh, so let me add one more hidden layer and now we have added two hidden layer our to our deep learning neural network for this particular model after this uh, the next thing we can add is uh, we can add our output layer so adding layers hidden layers and adding neuron into the hidden layer is a kind of uh, hit and trial method we need we can try a lot of uh, permutation combination and we can select the best one which is basically uh, performing best in our case so it it is kind of trial and error method and we can try different uh, combination and then we can choose the best so here we can add the same way we can add our output layer as well tf.keras.layers unit one that means i want only one neuron into this and activation function if you take a look at here is i am using sigmoid because in the last output layer i want to use activation function as sigmoid reason here is that my problem is of classification type so sigmoid function is used in such problems where we want to classify our uh, we want to classify something based on our input so now this part is uh, done this all this part is something similar to like we are configuring our model that what kind of thing we want into our model and how many layers how many neurons we want into our model what kind of new, new function that we want uh, activation function we want into each layer uh, after that we can compile our model to compile our model what we can do is we need to tell the optimizer optimizer basically helps us to converge to global minima mm -hmm. and to minimize the loss function and uh, it a uh, loss function we need to pass the loss function we want to tell that how we want to calculate the loss loss is basically the difference between the actual and the predicted value and the matrices means that which matrices we want to prefer we want to choose here we are saying that we want to choose the accuracy matrix that means we want to give preference to uh, accuracy of the prediction so this way we can compile our model now our model is uh, basically configured and compiled completely after this what we can do is we can do the training so to do the training what we need to do is we can do with the help of fit method 
So uh, how fit method is used? We can use something like this way. We can pass our X train, Y train, batch size, and epochs. Epochs tells us that how many iteration we I want to do over my training data set. Here I am passing uh, 50. So uh, I want I am saying that I want to create a model uh, based which will iterate through my training data set 50 times. That means um, once all of the rows are uh, traversed, one epoch is completed. Then second time all of the rows are uh, all of the rows are traversed, then it is the second epoch. This way, I want to go 50 times. Again, this is also a uh, hit and trial sort of thing. So you can see that uh, now my training has started. And as I'm going down the epochs, my epochs uh, number of cycle are increasing. My accuracy is also increasing. So you can see that uh, now my currently 10th eco epoch is going on and 38th epoch is going on and it now it has raised to around 85 86 percent of accuracy we can wait for here for a couple of seconds or few seconds here so that our training gets completed um, so now this part is completed uh, this part is completed you can see that my all 50 uh, epochs have completed and my I have received achieved an accuracy of 86 percent. Now after doing this the last thing what we want to do is we want to predict and to do the prediction what we want to do is basically we want to give uh, we want to give some random input to our model and we want to predict whether that particular customer will exit or not. So to do that, what we are going to do is we are going to do something like this way. So so uh, this way we can do the prediction of our model and whatever uh, our model has been trained, we can give some random value here and using sc.transform, we can convert those values into the into the transformed value so that uh, the way we have trained our model, it gets the data in the same format. And then we can do the uh, prediction. So uh, that's all for this video, guys. And one more thing I want to show it to you. Uh, from here, we can go to the file menu and uh, we can go to a save a copy into the GitHub. And from here, we can directly publish our code onto the GitHub as well. We can select the repository and the branch in which we want to uh, in which we want to basically save it. So this is about Google Colab and creating a model using Google Colab. And that's all for this video, guys. Thank you. See you in the next.